Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black glasses, I'm wearing a dark grey t-shirt, and I'm sitting in my office with a few coloured lights behind me. And in this video, I probably should have worn my red lightning shirt because I want to talk about charging. Um, so Tesla just had a new supercharger go live here in Victoria. And I went to check it out the other day. Um, and there was a few things that I think charges could be improved. There's a few things I think we could improve about charging locations, specifically here in Australia, but I'm sure globally we, we could learn from each other. So the first thing that I noticed about this charging location, it's in Dandenong in Victoria in Melbourne, and I couldn't find it. So I, I first I used PlugShare and the parking lot that it told me to go to was the wrong parking building. I went up and down these things and I thought, okay, well, let me just put in on the map on, on the Tesla. And it showed me on the Tesla, oh, you've got to go around to the other parking building, which was fine. But the signage, basically like there's a few red Tesla arrow pointing things. They're A4. Tesla, I know you're all big on this whole minimalism stuff, but could you print a bigger sign, please? So it's easy to find the charging locations. And it's possible that I missed the lot, that I didn't see the last one because I was a little flustered, but I didn't see the last one that sort of told me to go left. So I kind of went straight up, didn't find it, came back down. Oh, there they are down there. Six charges, easy to, easy to, you know, I will say the thing that Tesla does really well is that you drive up, you take the charger out, you put it in the car. That's all there is to it. There's, there's no other thinking involved if you're driving a Tesla. If you are using one of the trial locations, and I believe there's five trial locations in New South Wales where non-Teslas can use the Tesla chargers, you do have to activate it in the app, but even that's not too onerous. But that got me thinking about how we could improve just the locations of Tesla, well, no, how we could improve all charging locations. And this is definitely not the final list. And I'd be quite happy, quite keen actually, for you lovely viewers to let me know in the comments how you think charging locations could be improved. I will put a little caveat here that I do appreciate that it's easy for me to say, this is what all the charging companies should do. Because I'm not, you know, it's easy, to, it's easy to do something when you're not the one who has to do it. Am I right? So it's easy for me to say this is what you should do because I'm not the one who has to pay for it. I'm not the one who has to organize it, all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate that there's obviously logistical and financial and all sorts of challenges behind this not happening right away. But here we go. The first thing that I'd like to see with all charging locations across Australia is can we please have a roof? Can we just have a cover over it to protect us, A, from the rain, so when it's raining and you get out of your car to plug the car in, it's not raining on your head. You'll notice that just about every petrol station on the planet has worked that bit out. So, can we please have a roof to protect us from the rain? But also, this is Australia. It gets a little bright during the summer months. And so it would also protect the hardware during sunny days and really hot days from the really bad heat in the sun. So it is actually protecting the hardware, which is the investment of the company that's installing it as well. Part of that is very often, not always, but very, well, yep, I've just said very often, but not always, but quite often, you'll find that when you go to look at the screen on the charger, it's very difficult to see in bright sunlight. How about we get some things like this, which is a sunshade, put it on the screen, and it makes it easier to see in bright sunlight fairly inexpensive, I might expect. Now, it's got to stand up to the elements, but again, if you had a roof, it doesn't have to stand up to the elements so much as well. Part of that roof can also be that the area needs to be well lit at night, so you're not standing in a dingy dark alley, which would be nice. Um, also, just a little thing that I noticed with the Charge Fox chargers up in your row, so they've just installed some new ones, and they look very nice, and they look very shiny, and they've got really bright lights. But here's the thing. It's got really bright lights, but just above the bright lights is the number of the charger, the identifying number of the charger, which you need to find in the app to activate the charger if you don't have your RFID card. So at night, you've got a really bright light shining in your face, and you kind of have to do this to cover the light to be able to read the number that's in the dark. And this brings me on to it. It feels very often like the people who are installing the chargers or even building the charger sometimes, don't actually use them. Because if you just use the charger once at night and you looked at it, you go, ah, oh, 
I can't read that number because the number's in the dark and I've got a bright light right underneath the number. Like, it's so obvious. I'm not sure how that got missed in Q&A. Like, Q&A or Q... Quality control. Quality QC. Quality control. So that's another thing. Please have it lit, but lit in the correct way so the things that are important see, are easy to see. The next one is instructions. Now, I will say a lot of chargers around that I've seen have got pretty good instructions about how to use the charger. And it's a shame that this is required, but sometimes chargers have different mechanisms. Like sometimes you have to plug your cable into the charger first, then you have to plug it into your car afterwards. Sometimes you have to plug the car first, then the charger. You push the button, don't push the button, push this button, but not... Some of these charges seem a lot more complicated than they need to be. Now, most of them aren't, but like I'll give you an example. The ones um, up here at, at the at the bowls club where you've seen me charge quite often, how that process used to work is you had to activate it on the app, and then you had to plug in and you had like a minute or two minutes to get it into your car. And if you didn't get it in that time, it timed out. Now, I appreciate you need to have a timeout period, but it seemed really short. And sometimes I got it wrong. Like I plugged that. It doesn't have to be that complicated. The other thing with the instructions I think would be good is if they were in like comic fashion, like you had pictures as well as written words. The reason for that is tourists. You know, what if I'm in a country that I don't speak the language or I don't know how to read the language and the instructions are only in the language of the country? It would be nice if there was just little, you know, little six figures of pictures going, you know, plug in, plug out, do this, do that. I don't think it would be that difficult to do and you know laminate it so it doesn't get rained on what have you so instructions would be good the next one that i want to talk about i probably should have started with this um, or had this earlier on is accessibility so a lot of the charges that i've been to in fact i'd imagine most of the charges that i've been to are on a curb so if you are in a wheelchair or if you are using a cane to help yourself walk, or if you've got any sort of mobility issues, it might be difficult for you to get over that curb and get to the charger to get the cable and plug things in and so on. So I think definitely now's a really good time to look at all these things because a lot of money apparently is being spent in the next however many years installing this charging infrastructure. And if we're putting in the infrastructure, we may as well do it right the first time instead of having to put the charges in and then have to go back two or three years later to then add things or so on. Again, I appreciate money is an issue and, and all that kind of stuff, but the government seems to be putting a lot of money into it. And I mean, governments seem to love spending money on stuff they don't need to. So at least you spend extra money on stuff that's actually going to be beneficial. Just sorry for that, Digger. It's, it's been a day. So accessibility. Um, and I'm just thinking of, of wheel people who are in wheelchairs and people who need um canes or might not be able to lift their legs as much. I'm sure there's tons of other accessibility features that could be built into charging locations that I haven't even thought of. So if you do have some accessibility ideas of how charging locations could be more accessible, please let me know in the comments. I'm really keen to build up awareness of, of things like that. Um, tap to pay. I believe this is now going to be uh, mandatory in the UK where all charges have to have just a little, you know, tap to pay function. So you can just use a credit card to pay for your charging instead of having to have this card or that card or that card. Now the card thing, it's not that onerous, but I have come a cropper a couple of times where I get to a charge. I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this one. I'll download the app. Oh, I've got to set this up. Just tap to pay. I appreciate the companies want you to set up an account because that way they've got you in their ecosystem. But you're making things harder than they need to be. Um, now, I, 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 ironically, I didn't think this this was going to come across as so negative, and I don't want people who haven't got an electric car to think that it's such a terrible thing and it's so difficult and all that kind of stuff. But it could be better, and there's a few things that I think could be done to make it better that aren't that challenging. I think the last thing that I would talk about, and I think this one's very important, is uptime. And I'm sure that charging companies could comment on this and say things about how, oh, we can show you figures that this has actually got this much uptime and that much uptime and it, the, the perception isn't actually that bad. Sweetie, 
perception is reality. What well, they say the reality is not that bad. Perception is reality. So I don't care what the reality is in this instance. Perception and everyone's perception is that charges are down a lot. There's a particular company that's got an orange logo. I'm not going to say who. We all know who you are. You know who you are. That majority of the time that I go to your charging locations, at least one or more than one of the charges are down. Sometimes all of them are down. Now you could turn around to me and say, well, that charger was only down when you were there and 80% of the time, 90% of the time, it's, it's up and running. I'm like, yeah, but 80% of the time, it's sitting there not doing anything. But it seems to be that every time someone actually plugs into the charger, it stops working. I need to chill. I'm sorry, I got a bit carried away there. So I think, and I understand, like I've said in the past, where I think that one of the challenges there is that there's, it's almost like too many chefs in the kitchen, where one company looks after the install of the chargers, then another company looks after the maintenance of the chargers, then another company looks after the managing and the software side of the thing, and you've got all these different elements and all these different things going on. It's, it's no wonder that it's not as efficient as it could be. And that's one of the reasons why I think Tesla chargers whether it's true or not, the perception of Tesla chargers is that they're always working. Number one, when they install a charging locations, it's a minimum of four to 12 charging locations. So they've got redundancy built in there. And number two, because Tesla make the charges, install the charges and manage the charges, they're able to control the whole life cycle of the situation. Now, I'm not saying that other companies have to do this, but maybe have stuff written into the contract or somewhere where, right, I'm going to do this part of it, but therefore you have to do that part of it. And if you don't do that part of it, you get fined or whatever. Because I, I, I'm not sure how, and, and I find this frustrating when other people do it. So I appreciate it sounds like I'm just complaining without presenting solutions, but I don't know how your business is run. So just try and run it more efficiently i guess and maybe you do run it very efficiently i'm sorry i shouldn't i shouldn't have that go but the perception is that you don't so after that rant and i'm sorry this was nothing more than a rant um i hope that was helpful i hope that was useful i'm not sure how useful that was i think i think it could be helpful because i think if we all get together and and have some ideas and, and brainstorm a little bit about how oh you could improve it like this you can improve it like that this could be helpful so i hope this was helpful if you have found it at the very least interesting please like and subscribe and if you have already subscribed thank you so much for your support and we'll uh, catch you on the next one safe and happy driving Maybe I just shouldn't film anything today because I'm just, I'm, yeah, maybe I'm just not on the right headspace to talk to humans today. It was a whole thing. It's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about it. Actually, do you want to see my, do you want to see my Pepsi face? Anyway. <laughs>